Welcome to the Hyperbolic Activist, Learn Languages, Make a Difference. My name is Dr. Carlos Ibra Lopez, and today I want to share with you specific examples on how AI is being used to revitalize languages. Here I'm going to restrict my analysis to the big three, to OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google, and we're going to find specific use cases, which I think will be really, really interesting for you to observe. Now, first of all, we have the addition of Icelandic in ChatGPT4. This is important, not just for Iceland itself, but also as it is said here, insofar as Icelandic may serve as a pilot for the addition and preservation of other low resource languages. Now, you can read the whole story here on OpenAI's website. And it's very interesting because it gives specific examples of the kind of prompts that are being used to train ChatGPT and specifically on the importance of so-called reinforcement learning from human feedback, which necessitates constant human input and feedback. Now it says that at the beginning, they just tried with ChatGPT3, training the model in 300,000 Icelandic language examples, and yet the results were disappointing. But thanks to the much improved ability of ChatGPT4, just using 100 examples, they are now able to obtain much better results. So this is very, very good news. This piece also goes into detail as regards how to train a chatbot like ChatGPT4 in the cultural context. And so it's a fascinating piece. Finally, you can also observe some of the pitfalls and shortcomings that ChatGPT4 still has as regards the generation of written content in Icelandic. And so that's the room for improvement. Now, the second example is Microsoft. I haven't found any instances of Microsoft's being AI specifically, being able to revitalize endangered languages, but I have found many examples of how Microsoft's translator hub has been very instrumental when it comes to catalyzing the revitalization of these minoritized languages. And so, for instance, here it says, in Mexico, the Universidad Intercultural Maya de Quintana Roo is making use of the hub to record and share languages such as Yucatec Maya, a minority language descended from the ancient Mayan Empire. Similar efforts are being made to preserve Querétaro Otomi, another language indigenous to Mexico that is under serious threat. Again, these examples are important in and on themselves, but in addition to that, as this quote reads, it also means that once these pilot projects become successful, then the model can be replicated in the case of further low resource languages. The quote goes as follows. This means that under resourced communities and organizations all over the globe are able to take advantage of the offering in order to help preserve their language. Exactly. And finally, we have the instance of BART. Now, I haven't found any examples of BART being used to revitalize endangered languages, which is why I took it to BART itself and I asked BART, look, what is BART doing for endangered languages? And so Bart says that here are some specific examples. First, the Endangered Language Alliance is using Bart to create a digital archive of the Ainu language, which is spoken by about 15,000 people in Japan. 
The archive will include audio recordings, text, and images of the language, making it a valuable resource for learners and researchers. Second, the University of Hawaii is also using BART to translate Hawaiian language materials into English. This will make it easier for people who do not speak Hawaiian to access these materials, which include historical documents, cultural artifacts, and educational resources. And lastly, the BART project at the University of California, Santa Cruz, is using BART to generate text in endangered languages. This is very interesting. The ability of BART to generate, not just to understand, but to actually generate new unseen content in the endangered language in question. This text can be used to create new content, again, emphasis on the new unseen content, for learners and speakers, such as stories, poems, and songs. So this is very useful for pedagogical purposes. So that's it for me. I hope these examples are useful and inspiring for you when it comes to seeing the potential and actual results already of chatbots in terms of revitalizing endangered languages. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you aware of any further examples of endangered languages being helped revitalizing via the use of AI chatbots? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.